I see so many people quitting their jobs, leaping to travel to escape for a new life. What if I told you there was a better way? You could still work full time and get that balance of travel. My wife and I have found a good balance for working and traveling and we've been able to travel throughout the world for the last 10 years. If you work full time and want to achieve that balance where you can pursue that passion of travel, here are our top tips of how you can do that. In this video, we'll go into why employers want you in the office, how you can be effective anywhere without being in the office, how to prepare to be on travel and your setup, when to work while on travel, ensuring you can focus and be highly productive, and how to effectively communicate on travel. To continue, allow me to introduce my channel where we talk about adventure travel, our travel tips, and our experiences throughout the world so that you can have an amazing trip on your next travel. Make sure you smash that like button and be sure to check our subreddit down below. I'll leave a link in our description and it's where we'll post our future travel and travel tips that we'll eventually make into videos. So, and also if you have any questions for us or want to also post your own travel, feel free to do that there. And we're always interested in joining other people or you can feel free to join our travel. We're always interested in meeting more of you and uh, let us know your travel experiences. First, let's talk about the state of the industry and how it impacts remote work. Since 2020, employees were driven to work remotely and are gradually being brought back into the office. However, this is not the death knell for working remotely and employers still embrace a culture of distributed work throughout the world in offices in different countries and there is still remote working opportunities, whether you create it yourself or get hired for such an opportunity. So let's get into why employers want you in the office. One, it is easier to build stronger cultural values and build connections with other people when you see them in person. You have all these micro transactions with others that help build connections that you don't normally have when you don't see them face to face and are around them consistently. Pre-COVID statistics compared to after people went remote report that people were experiencing loneliness up to 67% more when working remote. Secondly, some managers may feel you being in the office and seeing you there is synonymous with you being productive. Let's talk about how you can set expectations of your employer to work remotely time to time or work remotely permanently. The most straightforward way is to simply find a job that is stated to be remote friendly or you can negotiate before you accept a new role so that you can work remotely time to time or permanently. It's important to know you have more negotiation power if you have a strong background for the role or a highly competitive skill that the position needs. Meetings are necessary but can also be the bane of your productivity and that's why you have to protect your time to be efficient. You should push back against meetings that you can't learn from, you don't feel you can contribute to, are scheduled too short notice that you don't have time to prepare, or are scheduled outside of core work hours. A lot of meetings can actually just be handled through email or messages that explain the information that is needed without needing to have a scheduled meeting that ch takes a, a chunk of time. This protects your time and also can still unblock the people needing the meeting. It's critical to build habits and a strong mindset to work during core hours and be able to produce a lot of work in a limited amount of time. This allows you to prioritize other things in life, such as travel, in your off hour. Being someone who is always too available, even outside of core working hours, can set the wrong message with your employer. And when you are on travel or doing other things in life, and making yourself not available outside of those core hours can actually be perceived as a performance loss. You can still be a high performer by setting the right expectations and just working those core hours. It's important to understand that working remotely while traveling may sound like a dream, but I want to emphasize that it will be harder on you and will take additional effort on your part to make sure you can pull off and still be productive on the go. I don't think it's a good idea to try this if you're starting a new role or a new job until you establish a baseline of trust with your team and a good amount of efficiency and then you can slowly start by trying small controlled trips and then work up to a longer one. All right, now let's talk about availability while on travel. I recommend communicating to those who you need to 
and informing them when you'll be on travel and the dates that you're going to be on travel. There is no need to repeat it frequently. Once is enough. And if you're doing things well, your team will actually forget that you're on travel. While you're on travel, it's important to have at least five hours of overlap with the core hours of your team. Communication is the beating heart of any team, and you want to make sure that you're reliable by responding to any communication from your team within a day. Failure to work similar hours to your coworkers will make you less dependable and more noticeable when your coworkers have to work with you. For example, when we travel to Turkey, we would explore an adventure during the day and find somewhere stable for the nighttime where it overlapped with the core hours of our work and we were able to work with our coworkers regularly. It's also worth noting that while you're traveling, you may experience delays or traffic and it's important to compensate for that time in your, in your day because your days can be kind of random sometimes. And so, but you must treat your work time as important. So buffer those in so you can always make it to work on time and protect those core hours you're supposed to work. Now let's talk about having the right setup. One of the most important aspects of having the right setup is to ensure you have a hotel that's gonna give you adequate internet or somewhere quiet and your internet has to be reliable and stable. Now how to find out if the internet is good at a hotel or a place you're gonna be staying can also be difficult, but you can read the reviews and if anything, call them up and ask them how reliable their internet is. The thing to look for or ask is how many megabits per second the internet is. Three is the minimum you want to be able to have stable internet. Five is good target and anything over 10 is great. If you have multiple people working at the same time, like my wife and I, and you might need video conferencing, consider five megabits per second your bare minimum. And make sure you bring all your gear so that you can work comfortably and reliably wherever you are and that you can set it up efficiently before your work hours. Now let's talk about a skill that will allow you to work remote efficiently. Achieving high focus principles. You want to practice being able to retain focus and be able to gain focus quickly. One technique that I've used in the past is the Pomodoro Technique. The Pomodoro Technique is where you have 25 minutes of intense focus and a specific goal to meet during those 25 minutes and you turn off all things and you just focus down on that one singular goal and try and accomplish it in 25 minutes. Another focus destroyer is like social media, your phone, put those things aside. And also, even with work being notifications, like an email notification or maybe an instant message notification, I'd even encourage to turn those off and make sure you check them regularly through your day in intervals so you don't destroy your focus. For those who have a hard time with meetings, I'd recommend putting meetings on your calendar with yourself to make sure you have focus blocks that you can get your work done throughout the day without having to worry about someone booking over those times and ruining your ability to get the work that you need to done. Also, ensure you're getting enough sleep. Sometimes when traveling, you spend long days and you wake up early. You might need a nap before you work, but it's important to treat that work seriously and have enough sleep so you can be fully rested and charged for your work hours. Lastly, let's talk about effective communication. One thing that will give you a better bang for your buck in terms of communicating is prefer to have visible communication such as posts, emails to greater groups and increase the visibility of what you have to say, especially for status updates then send to one person and maybe another person not knowing your status update. You want to just make it effective and efficient. Just get it out there for everyone to see where you're at. Another thing is don't take other people for granted. You want to take the time to build relationships with other people. So people get to know you, not as a worker, but as a person. And so that you get to, and also that you invest into others and build these relationships so that you're a always a visible face. People get to know who you are and you're recognizable. A part of that, whenever you have a one-on-one -on -one meeting or a social event meeting, make sure you turn your camera on. You want people to see who you are and feel connected to you. And without that camera on, it's harder to get to know the real person behind 
all the communication that you're doing. Use the social events to have fun, joke around, get to know your coworkers, and utilize those one-on-ones to build relationships. Get to know the person. Don't treat it all about just talking about work. Be genuine, get to know the other person, and build that inner relationship. Communicate clearly with your team estimates for when you'll have your work done and make sure you have proper padding in for learning and when things might go wrong. It's always best to get your work done before or on time, but try not to ever exceed the time. You want to always strive to be a person who your coworkers can trust, depend on, and recognize. So even when you're working remotely, your coworkers still feel they're working closely with you. And that's it. I hope you enjoy all of our tips and my wife and I have been traveling more and more frequently than before utilizing these tips. If you have your own tips to share, your comments or questions on the tips we've done, feel free to leave a comment below and I hope you enjoy travel and working at the same time in the future.